Hello, everyone, and welcome to Python for Data Analysis, Part 2, Python Arithmetic. So this is actually the first lesson where we're going to be learning Python itself. In the first lesson, we just went over what Python is and how to get started using it, either in the kernel environment or by downloading it onto your own computer. So in this lesson, we're just going to run through and show some of the different arithmetic operators you can use in the Python language. I'm going to scroll down here and we'll look at some code cells. Now in this cell we see 10 plus 5. So in Python you use the plus sign as an operator to perform addition. When we run that it will produce the proper result. And similarly you use the minus sign to do subtraction. So 10 minus 5 that should produce 5 as the result. And for multiplication you use the asterisk symbol. So here, 10 times 5 will be 50 when we run this. For normal decimal division, you use a single slash or forward slash. So here we're doing 10 divided by 3, and this is going to be a decimal result, something like 3.33, some number of decimal places. And if you want to do floor division, which means you divide but you throw away the remainder and just get a whole number, you can actually use the double slash to do that. So here we're doing 10 double slash 3. That means floor division 3, so we should just get 3, and we'll throw away this remainder of 0.3333. So that's what we get there. And if we want to do an exponentiation, we do a double asterisk. So here we're saying raise 10 to the third power, which should be 1,000. Now it should be noted that math expressions in Python follow the normal arithmetic order of operations. So for instance, multiply and divide are executed before plus and minus, and exponentiation is executed before either of those. Also note that lines in Python that start with a hashtag are text comments. Comments are just notes that you can put within your code that don't actually do anything at execution time. So they're essentially comments that help you describe what your code is doing. So in this case, in this code cell here, this is a comment that's just saying these operations are executed in reverse order of appearance due to the order of operations. So here, even though it says 2 plus 3 times 5 to the second power, the order that they're executed in is actually, this will happen first, 5 to the second power, so we'll get 25. Then that will be multiplied by 3, so we'll get 75. And then we'll add 2 to that, so we should get 77 here. So if we had wanted to execute that in the order that things actually appeared, you can do that by using parentheses to enforce the proper order of operations as you'd expect in normal math. So we'll give an example of doing that. So here we're saying, we'll put parentheses around the two plus three. So that will execute first now. And we're gonna wrap that in another parentheses. So this whole block is executing first. And once that's all done, finally we're raising it to the second power. So let's see what this is gonna be here. We're saying five, because two plus three is five, then times five. So five times five is 25. And then we're raising 25 to the second power. So that's gonna be something like 625? Yes. So now I'll go over a couple other operators and functions you may be somewhat less familiar with. If you're new to programming, you may not be familiar with what's known as the modulus or modulo operator. What it does is it divides a number by some other number and then gives you the remainder of that division. And in Python, you use the percent sign to take the modulus. So here we're saying divide 100 by 75, and we want the remainder of that operation. So in this case, it's, the remainder is going to be 25, so that should be the result of this modulus operation. And now I'll go through a couple math functions you can get by importing the math module. So the base language of Python is actually fairly bare bones, and a lot of the functions we're going to want to be using in data analysis and just in general, you actually have to get from external packages. And to do that, you use this import statement. So here we're saying we want to import the math module, which contains various common math functions. So we'll start by doing that. And now that we have the math module, we can call various functions within that module by saying math dot and then the name of the function. So here we want to take the logarithm of a number. That's what we're gonna do here. So to do that, we're going to do math.log 
and then we put whatever number we're taking the logarithm of in the parentheses. So this is passed in as the argument to this function by putting it in the parentheses. That's what the various things you pass into a function are. They're called arguments. So I'll run this math.log and we get something very close to one because this number is very close to the constant e, which is used in the default logarithm function, which is the natural log. If you want to do a logarithm function with a different base than the natural log, you can do that by specifying extra arguments. So here we're going to do the same thing, math.log. We're going to take the log of 100, but we're going to say comma. That means we're going to add an extra argument and 10. So we're saying take the log of 100 with a base of 10 now instead of using the natural logarithms. So the log base 10 of 100 should be 2 because 10 raised to the second power is 100. Now you can use math.exp to do the exponentiation function, which is just the inverse of the log function. So here we're going to do math.exp of 10. We get some big number. We can also use math.square root or SQRT to do the square root function. So here we're doing the square root of 64. That should be 8. We can use the abs function to get the absolute value of a number. And also note that abs is a base Python function, so we don't have to use the math package. That's why we're not saying math.abs, it's just abs. So we're going to take the absolute value of negative 30. That should be 30. And you can also use the math package to get the constant pi. So just if you type math.pi after loading the math package, you'll just get that constant. Now to wrap up this first video on Python for data analysis, we'll go into a few different ways of rounding numbers. So in base Python, you can use the round function to round something to the nearest whole number. So here we're saying round, our argument will be this. It should round it to 233 and just strip off everything after the decimal point. You can see we succeeded in doing that. Now, if you'd want to keep a certain amount of decimals, you can specify that with an extra argument. So here we're going to round again on the same number, but then we're going to say comma, and our next argument is one. So that means we're going to round, but we want to keep one thing after the decimal point. So we'll keep all of this, and then the three, four should be gone. So we have 233.2 .2 after this. Now you can also round to the left of the decimal point by using negative numbers. So you can use this to zero out, say, the ones place or the tens place and round all the way up to like the hundreds place or thousands place. So in this case, we're saying we're going to do round again, but with minus one, it means we're actually rounding all the way up to the tens place. So the ones place will be zeroed out here and we should get 230 from this. Within that math package that we loaded earlier, there are also additional rounding functions to do floor and ceiling rounds. A floor round just means you always round down, and a ceiling round means you always round up. So with math.floor, we're rounding down to the nearest whole number, regardless of what the decimal is. So even though 2.8 is closer to 3, when we do math.floor on it, it will go down to 2. And similarly, with math.seal, or ceiling round, even though this 2.2 .2 is closer to 2, since it's a ceiling round, it will go up to the next whole number, which will be 3. Now, just with these basic arithmetic operations we've learned in this lesson, you can start using Python as a very powerful calculator where you can save your calculations and rerun them and edit them, which is actually a very useful thing to do. Like I often find myself when I'm in need of just doing some quick math, opening a programming environment, typing out whatever calculations I want to do, and then running them and editing them as necessary. So for instance, if we wanted to know how many seconds there are in the year, and we didn't know that off the top of our head, so we could just add a new cell above here, edit it, say 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in a day, 365 days in a year, we could run that and we get the answer pretty easily. Of course, with something this easy, you could also perhaps just search for it on Google or whatever, but you can see that it's an easy way to do a bunch of calculations quickly and it's very convenient because 
everything we wrote is just stored here and we can easily manipulate and edit it and add parentheses places and run functions on it unlike perhaps say a calculator where it's not so user friendly because things aren't necessarily stored and you can't just easily say enforce orders of operations on things like oh we want to do this subtraction here and an exponentiation and all kinds of different things and get different numbers. Now that we know how to use Python as a powerful calculator, in the next lesson, we'll start learning about the basic data types available in Python. This will allow us to work with things like text in addition to numbers. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time.